Jack Black's not Latino, but he is an honor. He's an honorary Latino. He can say the B word if he wants to. Oh I will give him the pass. <laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode three of the Hand Me Down podcast. We're your hosts. Uh, my name is Natalia. And I'm Alan. And we're super, super excited, as always, to get into another episode with you guys. Today's episode is going to consist of, you know, same old, same old, going to be looking at what, what's been coming across on our TikTok, do some comments on that. And then after that, we're going to have a little bit of fun, take a little trip down memory lane and talk about Latino representation and more specifically Latino representation that we saw growing up. And maybe we'll compare it to, you know, what we're seeing now. Um, but it's going to be a lot of a lot of callbacks to our youth, I think. And it's yeah. going to be a lot of fun to like learn what you watched growing up and then you learning what I was growing up. A lot of introspection stuff. Yeah, about definitely. Latina media definitely. Back, back then. Yeah. We've come a long way. But before mm-hmm. we go ahead and jump into all that great stuff, mm-hmm. uh, just a little bit of housekeeping. If you guys don't follow us on social media, go ahead and follow us there. Mm-hmm. Hand Me Down Pod on Instagram and on TikTok. It's yes. the same handle. It'll be down in the description below wherever you're watching, whether you're watching on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Mm-hmm. Um, we post clips on there. The best clips. Engage with fans. See yes. what everybody else is having. Like, you know, I know when you guys are listening to this, you guys have thoughts. Mm-hmm. Share them either down below in the comments on YouTube, on the TikTok mm-hmm. um, comments or on Instagram. We'd love to hear your thoughts and hear what you had to say about the stuff we're talking about you know it's definitely an open conversation yeah because i feel like the purpose behind also starting this podcast is just like community as well like us trying to start a community feel like part of a community yeah. and i feel like engaging with us on social media is a, it is a perfect way to do that as well so we do we do genuinely want to hear what you have to say like your thoughts about the things that we talk about your takes um i think it's just gonna be like a lot of fun to know all, all that stuff and because we are so small at this moment, in terms of viewership, we read every single comment. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> we'll always read every single comment. <laughs> but yeah, definitely, um, we do like to, to read what you guys say, have to say. Mm-hmm. And if you're on YouTube, go ahead and give us a thumbs up, leave a comment. It helps like boost us in the algorithm, as well as if you're listening on one of the podcast platforms, go ahead and rate the podcast, give us a five stars. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if they let you leave reviews, leave a good review. Yeah. We would appreciate it very much. But with that being said, mm-hmm. hi, Natalia. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I am swell. I am um, kind of covered in dishwater because mm. i came back from work right now mm-hmm. so i feel i feel a little stinky if i'm That's being fine. honest but you know we're here we after the grind we have you know when they're like oh this is my nine to five and this is my five to nine yeah. like, <laughs> this is what that feels like I, a bit i've seen those tiktoks where it's all like this is my five yeah w- to whatever yeah five to nine mostly uh-huh five to nine nine to five no, no, yeah, five. Yeah, nine, right. I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> there are two places at once. <laughs> and it's just like wallowing my self despair. Like that. <laughs> oh, that's after this. <laughs> <laughs> that's after. Don't you worry. <laughs> um, but how are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm I'm chilling. Um, one, t- by the time we are recording this podcast, or as we are recording this podcast, we have already launched the first two episodes of the podcast. Mm-hmm. So that has felt nice to see everybody enjoying it. Yeah. Um, seeing good stuff on tiktok and not the other social media platforms but we won't name them but they are not pushing our stuff on hispanic heritage month yeah how latinophobic of how latinophobic <laughs> of i'm like what's what's a word that rhymes with it but i can't think of anything yeah no you're right that's fine um i went to tijuana on saturday and i got this cute little thing right here that if you guys are watching on youtube you can see it or i feel like you can also watch it on spotify actually so mm-hmm. we shouldn't discriminate um <laughs> it's a video podcast also on spotify so if you guys want to listen there go ahead mm-hmm. um but it was fun a little bit of chaotic tijuana is always chaotic um but yeah i mean moving into like news i guess that i feel like we sh- we have to talk about is oh last night we are recording this monday september 25th as of last night, uh, Sunday, September 24th, the writers have reached a tentative deal with the studios, mm. uh, with the movie studios. So it looks like the strike's going to end. How Hell do you yeah. yeah. It, it, where's the clapping button? Uh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I feel like that's just such a relief to hear 
that you know it's, it's like progress that we've all people you know such as alan and myself who who want to break into this industry what we've been watching through the sidelines trying to support in every way that we can and just like rooting for the writers and and the actors and i know the actors haven't reached anything quite yet but with the this new progress with the writers it, it gives me a lot of hope so i'm really like excited to to continue to follow as as they hopefully reach yeah goal. yeah this is definitely a step in the right direction if they've reached a deal with the writers that means that hopefully they'll reach a deal with the actors uh -huh. um but yeah uh i heard that the deal's pretty good that they got a lot of stuff that they were asking for um they're gonna get better residuals mm -hmm. for streaming which is crazy to think about that they weren't getting yeah. like they were getting like a little, little tiny bit oh of, of money uh -huh. whenever like the, cents yeah whenever their show was rerunning on, on a streaming service i was like that sucks man yeah um, absolutely terrible so i'm glad to hear it uh i have a lot of writers on my for you page and that i follow on instagram and mm -hmm. stuff and twitter mm -hmm. and they're over the moon so i hope that everybody votes for it and and that you know if, if they find it fair vote for it Let's, let's let's get the writers back in the writers room. Yeah, yeah let's make Which, livable wages. <laughs> speaking, by the way, I <laughs> when I, I I saw that the writer strike had ended, and then I saw that oh, like they are working on the Office reboot or whatever. <laughs> like <laughs> actually? Yeah, they're like they'll resume the pre-production process as soon as like the like it's official that the strike is over, and I'm like, why would you do that? Why? <laughs> 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 All this for what? <laughs> I saw a lot of people saying they were like keep the strike going like we don't <laughs> want it <laughs> they're like woo, Ooh. <laughs> like, i no. i don't i don't know if that would work i don't know if an office reboot would work in today's time uh definitely and just like, ugh, reboots in general i feel like some really good some really unnecessary <laughs> yeah but i don't know it's you said it's a business and when it people is, have yeah. intellectual property that that has like been true and tried they're going to try it again, but I don't know. I, we have great, the most talented writers mm -hmm. creating original stuff mm -hmm. or wanting to create original stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, they don't let them. But mm, Gets canceled after one season. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'm heartbroken. Anyways, good news. Um, the writer's strike is, is most likely coming to an end. Uh, we'll see how it plays out, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, that's good to hear. Yeah. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about um, is <laughs> the the hot Cheeto ban. Have you heard about the hot Cheeto ban? I it's have gonna not. Happen? It's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's wait. It's pending. Yeah, it's it's pen and pending. Um, <gasps> well, I, I I did a little bit of research because I heard about it and I was like, well, I gotta fucking do research if I'm gonna talk about it on the uh -huh, podcast. Uh -huh. um, it goes back to California passing a bill to ban red number three. Oh. So oh. remember when I was freaking out that they were going to ban Skittles? Be <laughs> it was because they were going to ban red number three. So they were like, California's going to ban Skittles. And I was like, fuck no. But I never heard about Hot Cheetos until now. I was like, what is the silencing of the Latino community that you're not going to talk about the Hot Cheetos? Just California? Just California. Pack your bags. <laughs> I'm moving somewhere the fuck else. No, that, that's what I was thinking. I was like, even when Donald Trump became president i never said i was gonna leave california or leave the u.s <laughs> but when you ban the hot cheetos i'm out i'm the little ant <laughs> i'm the little ant with, with the stick in the bag yeah. but i feel like if if that ban does happen i uh -huh. mean uh, obviously i think hot cheetos would scramble to just get rid of the red number three and put something else in it yeah because it, it, that's mostly just for looks right Could i feel like the spices, that doesn't count as red number three. I don't think no. so. B if not, Skittles would be spicy. Blue Takis? <laughs> blue Takis? <laughs> oh. Skittles would be spicy? Oh if we gosh. get 100 subscribers, we'll try the blue Takis. Uh, <laughs> 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 I mean, I feel like I'm down to try them either way, but like I, I haven't tried them up since this point. <laughs> Does that make me a bad Latino? I don't know. Blue... Mm, mm, mm. Blue Heat Takis. <laughs> blue th <laughs> but Smurf Takis. But yeah, I hope they don't get banned. I feel California is such a big market that I feel like they are going to change the recipe or change yeah. it. Like even for Skittles, like they can't lose the most populous state. That's true. Like in terms of like sales. Because so. we would lose what? Skittles, este, Hot Cheetos, Takis. I don't assuming. know about Takis, but like a whole bunch, like a bunch of stuff has, has read number three. Um, so yeah, that would be, that would take place in effect 
January 2025. So they have like enough time to like update the recipes. Oh shit. So, so I mean, California's banning it for a reason. I heard that it makes your ADHD go crazy or like like it creates behavioral issues in kids. Um <laughs> Cheetos? Yeah, I, I've seen like people, okay, it's not very scientific but I've seen people on TikTok say like, yeah I stopped giving my kids stuff with red number three and they've like, calmed down. Um, oh my god. But, I, I don't know, I mean, if California's bannering, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's some science behind <laughs> it, but that's that's what I've heard. Have your parents or, or your grandparents ever like, brought something that they saw on Facebook that like, Hot Cheetos like, on fire or something? <laughs> like, like, they can hold a flame for a while and they're like, this is what you're eating and like, try to convince you? No, but my parents have been like, oh, you're going to get an ulcer if you keep on eating Hot Cheetos <laughs> and fucking Takis. <laughs> <laughs> They've threatened me with an ulcer, not with misinformation yet, but... <laughs> threatened me with an ulcer. <laughs> But, I mean, yeah, I do try to not eat them as much, but... Honestly, same. They do get mad, though. Like, if I find their food spicy sometimes, uh-huh. they go like, oh, pero te come los hot Cheetos. I'm like, well, they're not as spicy as the fucking Cheetos you're putting in this shit. Wait, speaking of, like, spicy, because um, you like spice. Yes. yes. I love spice as well. When we lived in the dorms at UCLA freshman year, and nothing had flavor, <laughs> nothing uh-huh. was spicy, did your spice tolerance go down? Um, I don't, I mean, we, <laughs> Lore, Lore piece Lore. number two, uh, we were only at UCLA for like six months, uh, before the pandemic hit mm-hmm. and then we never got back into the dorm food. Yeah. But, um, I don't remember noticing it, really? but I did put hot sauce in my food cause they did have like Cholula Tapatio. They did? Where? Denev. Oh, Denev was too far for me. Yeah. So I would just like stick around but that's that's where they did have a hot sauce so i would use hot sauce there oh no i literally <laughs> none of my food was spicy and then i went home for thanksgiving and christmas <gasps> <gasps> mocos down my face like my i also <laughs> lived in la so i went home often oh okay yeah i i, I did that, not go home maybe that's why i didn't notice it was like, oh. <laughs> i was but. like oh who am i turning into <laughs> what is ucla's food doing to me <laughs> but yeah that, that 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 was my little piece of <laughs> ranting or ban banter banter or no i was gonna say banter already has a word ban in it because we were talking about how you know, <laughs> <Banter>. anyways <laughs> 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 moving on <laughs> um i mean moving on i guess to today's topic then loki well, oh that cause, like kind of like would catapult oh uh, okay well i guess uh, i was i was ho- okay I'll talk about something else. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a ban on chocolate abuelita, dude. <laughs> what did she do? I don't know. I mean, Joe Biden's in office, but all this shit's happening and all of a sudden against the Latino community. Not Latina Mima. Just kidding. I just want to make sure that I am not a Trump supporter. <laughs> it's just a joke. <laughs> but I like pull out the red hat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't look good in hats. I wouldn't wear a hat. I'd uh. wear a shirt. <laughs> I'd wear one of the shirts that has, like, sexy Trump on it. Have you oh, seen those? No, <laughs> sexy Trump. <laughs> like, they are... Conservatives are being very homophobic, are very um, homoerotic when it comes to Trump. Um, he, he's, like, shirtless, hella ripped with fucking machine guns, and there's, like, explosions in the background. It, they were unironically. 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 Like, they think this is the best thing ever like they he is <laughs> like this like this is what he this is the energy he gives off they to wake up in the morning <laughs> they look through their closet there what what else would be in their closet do you think um <laughs> jorts cargo <laughs> shorts they're like looking through all of that <laughs> <laughs> they like set they skeletons to <laughs> they're like mm, i don't want to wear that i don't want to wear that like but this, you, <laughs> you, you, they, and then when they bought that, they're at the store. They're like, you're coming home with me. <laughs> <laughs> you're coming home with me. It's, uh, but anyways, <laughs> tangent. <laughs> tangent, tangent, tangent. Chocolate abuelita is also going to be banned. Well, not necessarily a band. Um, so I saw that uh, Nestle, uh, or is that how you say it? Nestle or ne- Nestle? Nestle? Nestle, how do you say it in Spanish? Nestle. I'll, Nestle. I'll say Nestle. Nestle, okay, I will say Nestle because it's Nestle USA mm-hmm. is suing 
two other brands, not brands, but like companies that export uh, Nestle from Mexico. So like there's like a U.S. division mm-hmm. and then there's a Mexican division. They're mm-hmm. suing two companies that bring stuff from Mexico into the U.S. So like they also make like lechera and like chocomil and stuff like that. Lechera. <laughs> <laughs> but the U.S. There's there's versions in the U.S. that are made in the U.S. Right. And like approved by the FDA by the U.S. Of chocolate abuelita. Of chocolate abuelita of lechera of like these like products. Mm-hmm. But there's also the Mexican versions. I and see. these companies are exporting the Mexican versions to the U.S. Mm. And Nestle U- USA is like, well, that's confusing the people, like our customers. Mm. Like they don't know which to pick, so we're oh. suing you guys. But I don't know if there's an, a U.S. version of chocolate abuelita because if there is, then we don't have to worry about the ban. We just won't get like the Mexican, Mexican, Mexican cho- chocolate abuelita. Chocolate mima. Yeah. So. Chocolate I don't know. meat moop. I saw someone making a big deal of it on TikTok, and I was like, I did, I did some research. <laughs> and <laughs> we were and ready I was like, okay, time. well, actually, it's not that much to worry about. What we got to worry about is the hot Cheetos. Yeah, that's the, I'm biting my nails for that. <laughs> 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 What's going to be the late night snack with my sisters? I know. I tried not to eat hot Cheetos that late because I'm just like, I can't imagine what that's doing to my stomach at <laughs> <that> night. <laughs> But, you know, we're only human. I'm only human. I'm only <laughs> <laughs> After <laughs> all. <laughs> Hot Cheetos having a party in your Hot tummy. Cheetos, yeah. We should make that song. Hot Cheetos having a party in your tummy? Mm, we should make a child's TV program. And just rot their brain <laughs> <laughs> with fucking TikTok. <laughs> make their HD off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. After I raised two children. <laughs> 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 Yeah, by the way, we have a gripe with that. No one has been doing the hashtag Rachel Kid Right Challenge. Yeah, what the heck, guys? It hasn't been blowing up. We haven't <laughs> done that either. <laughs> Go, step one, have a kid. <laughs> yeah. That is mm, offensive. Not <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, okay, yeah, let's go ahead and <laughs> jump into <laughs> the topic at hand. The topic um, at hand. We both have, like, lists uh-huh. uh, so we can, like, go ahead and, and alternate. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, what what do you think this segment is supposed to be? Or, like, what are they going to expect? What should their audience expect from this? I mean, like, what the, what my, like, how I approached my list? Yeah, or, like, what... Or what would we probably talk about? Definitely characters, uh-huh. uh, like let that were Latino mm-hmm. uh, growing up. Just like the little thrown in. A lot of them are like side characters, yeah. not main characters. Mm-hmm. Things that they did and, and kind of just like, <laughs> our, if we can remember them, our impressions of them when yeah. we were children. Um, and just kind of like looking back at it now too, because I feel like some... A lot of things that were let slide back in the day, I'm like, girl, yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, because as, as I was trying to put together my list, uh, I kept on seeing a lot of recent stuff. And I was mm. like, yeah, and I was trying mm. to find stuff from, mm-hmm. from the past. And I was like, fuck, I can't, like, I, I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, a lot of the stuff from the past isn't um, that great. Uh, of representation but if it is yeah. we'll, we'll call it out and just see how it affected us and stuff yeah. like that but because i think the context for the characters that um we watched a lot growing up younger is that they're not made by latino people mm-hmm. they are not so i feel like that definitely is seen in the characters and stuff like that so it's just like something to keep in mind as well um but before we get into like our characters and stuff, I wanted to bring up something that I had saw on TikTok that kind of related to like what we would talk about today. Uh-huh. Um, so the other day I was scrolling through TikTok, going, you know, as you do, as as one does, and I came across this video. It was like a clip from a podcast. Uh, it was like a film podcast, and they were talking about the movie Bottoms, which full disclosure I haven't seen yet. Um, yeah. So I could. I I do like that bit of context of what this person said, but basically in the TikTok, um, this person is talking about good representation versus bad representation. And they said that they get very irked when, p- when people talk about good representation versus bad representation 
basically their argument was that good representation does not exist um, because what is positive representation for one person is oppressive representation for another. And um, they were doing this in the context of the film Bottoms, so specifically talking about queer characters. And they were saying that characters nowadays, uh, especially queer characters, have to be presented as perfect or else people will complain. Um, and I just kind of wanted to, to see what, what you kind of thought about that, like your yeah. take on, on that. Cause, um, and then they do go into to a spiel about the movie Bottoms, which, like I said, I haven't seen, but I have, uh, like, everything on my Twitter is Bottoms. Like, you know how like, yeah, people like, spoil it me for too. you before yeah. you watch it? So, yeah. like, I know a little bit about it. I need to watch it. But just the, the thing that, like, got my attention was that they said that good representation does not exist or that it's, like... And, and, and I, and I want to know what you thought about it because that's something that we talk about a lot, yeah. constantly. No, this is a great topic. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I, I agree with some aspect of it, but I don't agree with the other. Mm-hmm. Same, same. I, I do agree with uh, positive representation for one person is oppressive representation for another. Um, it's, or not, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't use the word oppressive, mm-hmm. but... <coughs> Especially, and, and you made this point once, um, because I had talked about before in the past how I feel like black f- artists, mm-hmm. whether they're f- uh, filmmakers or um, creators or, or musical artists, mm-hmm. kind of have a similar message or similar style. Like, um, they kind of are able to exist in the same movement together. Mm-hmm. And I was like, why can't Latinos do that? And you said it was because everybody's at a different stage as a Latino. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there's a there's a immigrants or people who migrated here. And then there's uh, first generation and there's second generation, there's third generation, there's fourth generation, (laughs) fifth generation. So it's so many people that it's kind of hard to like come together. And and everybody has their own idea of what good representation looks like. Mm -hmm. Um, But I do think that. In terms of characters, mm-hmm. I don't think people should be afraid to make them flawed. Yeah, um, it is a flawed character. You can have a good, in my opinion, it can still be good representation and still be a flawed character. Yeah, and that was the point that they brought up in the rest of the video. Like just to make that clear, is that they were bringing up the fact that the characters and, and bottoms were very flawed. They were quote unquote assholes, as as this person used to describe them. And that's like fine. I don't. I don't think that. I think there was a mix-up between good representation and character flaws because mm-hmm. I feel like character flaws are so important to have in in screenwriting. That's and what makes your character. Liter- <laughs> it's what makes your character human. Character. And I feel like where that argument comes in of like the the bad or good representation is um, like. Well, we can't deny that there's harmful representation. Yes. Whether or not you agree that there's such thing as bad or good representation, you really can't deny that <laughs> there's harmful representation. And I do agree that good and bad representation do exist um, because a when when like a white person is creating a character that is not from their culture, that's bad representation because mm-hmm. they don't know they don't know what what that's like or like to, yeah. to do that for me when i think of good representation i think of real representation yes that it feels real yeah it not necessarily real. okay well i was gonna say not necessarily paint this in the best light mm-hmm. but like yes like it, your <laughs> flaws are not driven off the fact that you're latino the fact that you're queer the fact yes that, like that's, that's good representation yeah yeah <laughs> So I feel like, yeah, because I was reading the comments, too, um, on this, and, and a lot of people were agreeing, and but there were some people that were like, ooh, I kind of don't like the way that they said that first part of the argument. It kind of, st- like, rubbed me in the wrong way. Um, and, and, and I did kind of agree, because I was just like, ooh, like, I, as somebody who's constantly fighting for representation for both queer people and Latino people and Latina women, mm-hmm. it's like, No, there is such thing as good representation and bad representation. It just doesn't, like, go hand in hand with character flaws. I Mm -hmm. don't think so. And especially for me, one of the things is with these character flaws, 
sometimes it's I don't feel bad for giving a character like really bad flaws mm-hmm. if I explore the reason why those flaws happen yeah in their life whether it's stuff not even relating to their Latinidad mm-hmm. but just um even if it is stuff relating to their Latinidad like yeah. what is this experience that is causing them to yeah be a quote-unquote bad character yeah because that does have a lot to do with the flaws that you present through your character that it has a lot to do with the complexity of your character and the complexity of your character is is what the the different factors that make up that character Mm -hmm. and a lot of the times it's like where they grew up like their their um cultural backgrounds their sexual identities like all these things that make your character complex and that's what makes a good character is a really complex layered character that makes decisions based off of their backgrounds yeah. and where they come from and i mean that's what i try to do also when i create characters as well yeah and because when it when it is that bad representation when it is just kind of like the character is bad because they are latino because yeah. they are a cholo archetype mm-hmm. um it, it's, I don't like it. I think it's bad representation because it's lazy. Because you're mm-hmm. relying mm-hmm. on this archetype, on this stereotype to like do the writing for you and be like, yes. oh yeah, okay, this, everybody knows this character is going to be bad because of this. Yeah. But if, if you explore it and if, you, if it's well written, mm-hmm. yeah, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's good representation. It's good representation. And not everything has to be uh, positive stories. No, but yeah. Mm-mm. Not everything has to be positive, perfect, like picture perfect, like not a single hair is out of place type of representation. Mm-hmm. Like it's, you know, make your characters flawed, make your characters and that's, complex. But that's still refreshing to see though when it is all positive. Like, I mean, we reviewed A Million Miles yeah. Away last one and that one was kind of like perfect. Kind of mm-hmm. like there was some struggles and stuff, but it was like really good representation. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there's. I don't know. Yeah. And I, there was one comment that said the fact that this is a discourse does show how far we've come in representation. Mm. And I do agree with that. Okay. I do agree. Like, it, it gives us something to talk about now that, you know, uh, in this day and age, it's much easier to have a platform. Like, uh, us making this podcast yeah. <laughs> is much easier to have a platform and to bring attention to these issues that, you know, for a lot of people, if it doesn't relate to you, you don't care. Yeah. But for many people, it does, it does relate to us and it does... Like, what we see on the media does affect us, and we do internalize it, whether we intend to or not. So, that's, yeah, yeah, that was my spiel. And that's a great way to, like, segue into this next one, because we're going to talk about how that representation did, like, affect us or all that stuff. Uh Uh-huh. I don't know if you would like to go first, or... I, my list is kind of funny. (laughs) (laughs) Go ahead. I, yeah. I was just like (laughs) spitballing. Should I just like spitball everything and then go back or like go like one by one? Maybe you can go like one by one. One by one. One each. The very first thing that I thought about when you presented this topic of like what we should talk about is uh, Spy Kids. (laughs) Uh (laughs) Spy Kids. And especially that Spy Kids has been brought up a brought up a lot recently i feel like because of blue beetle mm-hmm. uh blue beetle a lot of people saying that it is the first latino superhero <laughs> movie which it is like quote unquote yeah in this new in, in this craze. new like craze um and but a lot of people were just like what about spy kids like spy <laughs> kids is the first latino superhero and uh spy kids is directed by robert rodriguez correct mm-hmm. who directed el mariachi and and is is a a pretty prominent name in the Chicano filmmaking community. Yeah. Um, and recently, I rewatched Spy Kids, like a, about a month ago or something. Mm-hmm. And it, <laughs> it was in my, my struggle days when I didn't have access to any streaming <laughs> services. <laughs> and Spy Kids was free on YouTube. <laughs> so I watched it. And um, I had a blast, <laughs> genuinely. Like, I could definitely tell that... Um, it was made for, uh, you know, for a wide range of audiences of different types of backgrounds and stuff like that. But however, I did really enjoy when Robert Rodriguez took the chance to add a Latino reference mm-hmm. in, in the film, whether 
it be like something so I guess niche like the An Antonio Banderas' character his name is uh, Gregorio Cortez like uh -huh. so like the ballad of Gregorio Cortez mm. like that movie and I was just like oh, <laughs> I see you Robert I see you Robert Rodriguez <laughs> like, and it was just like little things like that and just like having having the actors that he did um yeah. It was just, I had a blast. I was like, this is fun. And people shit on it because they're like, the CGI is bad, which mean like, yeah, I agree with that, but it's part of the world building. And like, I was telling Alan, I was just like, I think I'm just a fan of movies with really bad CGI <laughs> because I understand the vision. Understand. Yeah. I'm like, I see it. It's just not in the budget. They just went for it. Yeah. And they're just like, <laughs> said, we don't have the budget to care about this. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Um. But the very compatible. Like, they were yeah. like, I have this, yeah, I have this vision. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it. I have this vision. I'm gonna do it. I regrettably had never have never watched Spy Kids. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> yeah, I I would not um, care if people wanted to take my Latino card for this. I would I would hand it over. <laughs> I I I feel like even now I should have still watched it. But I don't know why as a kid I never I never watched it. Um, what about Shark Boy and Lava Girl? Tampoco. No. No. I I don't know why. Um, oh my gosh! I I I I don't know why, um, which sucks because now looking back at it, I'm like this was literally made for me and I <laughs> didn't <laughs> fucking watch it. Yeah, so you don't know the banger that Shark Voice sings? Well, I know it because of you guys. Oh, because I know it through popular culture. <laughs> through popular culture, <laughs> me. Yeah, and that, like the Dream Journal. <laughs> from yeah. He ruined my Dream <laughs> Journal. I did not. It was a fucking book. <laughs> I actually saw that clip today. Really? On my, on my for you page. That's yeah. so funny. <laughs> I was like, oh well, okay. They knew we were gonna talk about this. <laughs> um, but yeah, shout out to Robert Rodriguez. Shout out to Robert Rodriguez. Doing it. Yeah. The same one. Started with like indie movie, made a movie. And my dad was made for like seven hundred dollars. Really low budget. Um, and then he's like, I'm gonna make something for the kids, mm -hmm. for the Latino kids. The kids. And I did not eat it up. <laughs> <laughs> I did not watch it, <laughs> but I I will. I on will. the list. I, it's on my list. <laughs> it's on my watch next list on YouTube. Definitely. <laughs> uh, but the, that was my first one. And then do you want to go into your... My first one, um, which we'll, we'll come back to, to this one in a bit, but uh, the first one that I thought of was Dora. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seeing myself yeah. represented mm -hmm. in Dora and Go Diego Go. Mm-hmm. Um, bate bate chocolate, um, abuelita, just mm. doing shit. Um, you know, I know it's like meant to teach you Spanish. I already knew it. I was like, Dora, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you, do you know who you're talking to? Because you know how she's all like, do you see the map? And I'm all like, okay, well, if I can, you're talking to me. You can see me. You see I'm brown. <laughs> I know this. Dora's <laughs> watching. <laughs> Dora's always watching. Um, but right here in the notes that I have, I wrote the fuck ass Bob. <laughs> the return of the fuck ass Bob. <laughs> that was my influence. But I, the fact that whenever a girl cut her hair like that, a Latina girl cut her hair like that at school when we were kids, she would be called Dora. Yes. I think says a lot about how little representation we had. Yeah. Because that's, like that, that's like the only thing that they that they saw in media uh -huh. that looked like them so they were just like well this is the only person we have so that's why i feel like it was just such a joke it was just like heard all the time because like we didn't have anything else to like compare it to that's true that was, that's my little my little tidbit dora I started <laughs> the fuck ass bob <laughs> i don't know if you have any more no. things to say about dora go diego go dora was just so much fun to watch as when I was little, Go Diego Go was really fun to watch too. And just like, um, I, when I was really little, I watched Dora in Spanish. So she, she would actually teach me English. <laughs> <laughs> Tico would uh -huh. teach me English. Wow. Like, and so that was crazy. Um, but I do remember just like, um, the everybody calling girls with short hair, like especially Latina girls with short hair. Yeah. Oh, you got the Dora cut, Dora cut. Um, sometimes, guys, it was just hot, and we needed our hair short. <laughs> 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 like, um, it's but it's an iconic. It is. They did get that right. Mm -hmm. Iconic Latina look sometimes. Yeah. As, 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 as like a toddler. 
<laughs> a lot of pictures of my cousins <laughs> with, the, with, the, with the cut. With the Doya haircut. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can go ahead and go on <laughs> to your second one. <laughs> so my second, the second one, we're, we're going to go a little bit into like early teens. Or is it, is it called tween when you're like tween, 12? Yeah. 12-ish. 11, 13. 12, yeah. uh, was The Book of Life by Jorge Gutierrez. Changed my life. <laughs> quite literally and i know you haven't seen it i haven't it, seen right? it either i I'm, I'm bad no <laughs> oh my gosh i what <laughs> when did that come out oh i might not have been a tween 2014 i want to yeah, say uh, yeah, 2014 oh, wow. damn see that's how freaking obsessed i was with this movie i saw this movie seven times in the theater wow in the theater <laughs> like i was obsessed with it. I love the art style. And I think it was because it was the art style of Jorge Gutierrez, who also did El Tigre on Nickelodeon. I do remember that one. I do remember watching that. El Tigre, yeah. which, which um, my sisters and I would watch every so often. So it just also felt very familiar, too. And um, it was just so much fun. It was so funny. Um, there, like, I do remember thinking, like, why is Channing Tatum in this movie about Mexico? <laughs> 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 It fair was fair. so good. I loved Maria Posada's character. I was having a blast. The music was fun. Like, I bawled my eyes out. And not a lot of people watched it. Or mm -hmm. Especially, like, when Coco came out. Um, and people were like, oh, but, like, did you guys watch Book of Life a couple years ago? Everybody was like, huh? And I was like... Me, yeah. It, I mean... It's really good. I... Uh, I... I when I was 13, I, I don't think I was thinking about Latino representation like this. <laughs> um, and then I just like never got around to watching it. But um, who is a distributor to this? Because I feel like I didn't, like there wasn't a big marketing push. No. Which is something else we need to talk about, which is yeah. like whenever stuff does come out and that it's good, it gets to some of us and it doesn't get to other yeah. people. I do remember it just being like a, oh my God, I don't remember the distributing company. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, but uh, produced by Guillermo del Toro mm -hmm. um, and then Jorge Gutierrez, who, who I actually met. <laughs> Lord, yeah. please. I did meet Jorge Gutierrez. My lore. More lore. More lore. My freshman year of college, um, my good friend Mark Sanchez took me to go interview him at um, Netflix Animation Studios when he was working on his uh, show Mayan the Three. And that was awesome. He's super cool. He's super funny. And mm -hmm. Yeah. So go watch his work. Mm -hmm. Mayan the Three is on Netflix right now. Um, and mm -hmm. Book of Life. Maybe we'll bring Mark. Oh yeah. As a guest. Yeah, he was a guest on our other podcast. He was Pada a guest Cultura. on Paracultura. He was. Um, but he's come so far he since is. then, and yeah, it'd be, it'd be great to catch up with him. Mm -hmm. uh, but 20th Century Fox was the oh, okay uh, distributor, along with other ones. But um, they didn't do a good job marketing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Coco had a really big push, and I think it, it was because it was Pixar, Pixar that, so that 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 it did happen. Mm -hmm. um, and we will talk about Coco. We won't talk about it that much here. Yeah. But yeah. we have a separate episode planned for the Dia de los Muertos. Oh, slash yeah. maybe Halloween. Yeah. So look out for that. Definitely. Um, my second one. I guess I'll, I guess I'll talk about this one now. Um, I might have not <laughs> <laughs> seeked out a lot of Latino representation uh, growing up as a kid because I got that representation elsewhere which is watching mexican tv and like mm. actual mexican tv shows um mm. like la familia peluche or like anything by Eugenio Derbez. um watching like a la vision and kind of like vecinos and like all that stuff um my mom watching novelas and, and things like that so that's what i saw as like that's where i would get my latino media from um which that also has its problems because there's also like very white passing Latinos mm -hmm. who are very dominant in the industry. But I mean, that's why my, my w whatever my parents watched was a lot of stuff that was like people who look like me. Eugenio Derbez is a good example and just like other comedic shows mm -hmm. uh, along that. But like novelas obviously have. Yeah. Also a lot of <laughs> white people, but uh -huh. also brown people sometimes. But yeah. Definitely is an issue that. That uh, an issue that I can't find the word uh, engulfs Mexican TV <laughs> colorism oh very yeah. prominent oh yeah but 
that that's just what I wanted. I feel like that's why I haven't seen a lot of the Latino media too. U.S. Oh. based Latino media. It's just because I was like. That makes a lot of sense. You know, actually, I I don't know. Because I c- uh, earlier in the podcast you said I wasn't thinking about this when I was thir- I was yeah I d- I yeah. genuinely mm-hmm. was when I was thirteen like just like thinking about all this and I think that's also you know what we talk about as um you know our identities you being first generation me being second and third is that I did not really grow up watching novelas yeah. only only when like my grandma would take care of me but even then we she wouldn't really watch a lot of novelas. She wasn't a novella girly. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I didn't watch a lot of novelas. Um, and so I would watch a lot of U.S. media, U.S. shows. Mm-hmm. And, and I, d- I talk about this a lot, like when people ask me why you became a filmmaker, like why I became a filmmaker, yeah. is just like feeling that disconnect from media growing up, mm-hmm. feeling so disconnected from movies, TV shows, and just like not really understanding why. And it like wasn't until I got older and I started to take classes that, that pushed me to do research. And, and when you realize, I started to realize like, oh, it's because I'm internalizing all of the ways that US media is portraying Latinos and I don't like it. So like as a response, I feel disconnected. I don't want anything to do with it, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Because like, I feel like that's also why it took me so long to figure out that I did want to go into film because you, you would talk about how you knew when you were little yeah. that you would like, to to create content and stuff like that it took me a really long time to like get there because there was a giant disconnect between me and media and shows tv and stuff like that yeah and and talking about that disconnect and i think you mentioned it a little bit and i was thinking about it too um whenever now that we're seeing a lot more latino media Mm -hmm. movies tv shows Mm -hmm. Whenever something comes out, I'm automatically like against it mm-hmm. or like I'm automatic, not against that it's coming out, but automatically like, oh, boy, well, let's see, like if this does it I right, oh. if, like you get me because and, and we'll get to some of the examples where it's like bad representation. Yeah. Um, whenever something new comes out, I'm like, well, let's see if this like holds up or if this. I get what you gets mean. up to my standards so yeah. I think that's me internalizing all the bad representation that I've seen throughout my life um, yeah. as a Latino and like you said like feeling that disconnect and maybe seeing myself portrayed and I have examples but and we'll get into that but yeah. seeing myself portrayed as like in a bad way mm-hmm. so whenever I would see something mm-hmm. that was kind of representation I'd be like well I kind of don't want to see that and maybe yeah. I'm, I'm processing this right now. No, I'm processing. <laughs> do, do you guys see my... If you're watching, look at my eyes as I'm like... <laughs> like I am now processing maybe... Because I always thought, like, why didn't I see watch a lot of this like kind of like Latino media growing up? And maybe it was because of that. Like, I would see myself portrayed in, in, in different ways. And I was like, I don't really like that. Um, yeah. So when I... Like, it, I would already mistrust it from the beginning. Mm-hmm. And now as I'm like, obviously my mental my brain is developing yeah um i look at it a little bit more critically and like learn to see what was good representation and now like i obviously do see it but yeah yeah definitely mistrust is a really good word to use for it too because i feel like when you said like oh now you're kind of like in a place where you're almost like prejudice in a way where it's like yeah, yeah <laughs> like, like these fucking latinos what are they gonna <laughs> feed me now <laughs> But I feel like it's because we're in the era where people are fighting that and combating that. Mm-hmm. And we're still getting our palates used to that yeah. because our palates are not used to that. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah, because I do agree 100 percent. I feel like I was started to calm down after watching A Million Miles Away. And I was just like, oh, oh, this this goes hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, like, this is really, really good. Um, but, yeah, I guess it's just like. The media regaining our trust um, is like a really it's something that we're going through right now. And it's and it is just like um, for those ki- so that those kids don't have those experiences, mm-hmm. whether they be your experiences mm-hmm. of not seeing yourself represented or my experience of just like staring, steering clear of stuff. Yeah, because it wasn't good representation mm-hmm. or like traumatizing representation or just like, yeah, um, so. That's what we want to fight for, and we're glad that 
to see it happening, um, you know, and planning for some episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, uh, I feel like we should review more movies. And I like looked back at my letterbox because I just, I'm not a film bro. I don't use it. I don't write reviews. Le- letterbox? <laughs> <laughs> I don't write reviews on there. I just, pu- I just put the stars on how much I like a movie after I watch it. Um, and I, I do, I literally do it just to keep track of what movies I watch mm-hmm. just cause I forget or cause I don't know if someone asked me like, what did you watch recently? I'm like, I don't know. I don't yeah, remember. Same. Um, but I looked through that and I was like, I see like three Latino movies here. And then when I added, um, a million miles away, that's four this year. Mm-hmm. That's kind of something unheard of. And, yeah. and I'm talking like popular ones mm-hmm. like out there yeah um, big big so movies. i was like or we're getting to a place where it's it's good and yeah you know, still breaking it down still trying to hold people accountable when it's not good mm-hmm. um but yeah it's exciting era actually now that i think about it that's what i was thinking about I'm like 20 2023 has been a, a good era for latino filmmaking very exciting yeah. era so oh. <laughs> let's let's go back to the past. Let's go ba- back to the past. Back to the uh, or not, not back to the past. We st- want to go to the future, but like our list. <laughs> our um, list. Our list. <laughs> do you want to go next? <laughs> the next one on my list is <laughs> Tried and True Beverly Hills Chihuahua. <laughs> 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 this one I would say is bad representation, or like not bad, but like. You you could tell very little research was done. Yeah. I would say, I don't know, because it was so fun. It is? Okay, <laughs> I'll give it that. Freaking Chloe at the end. No, Moss. And just like the bark kills me every time. Go Drew Barrymore. Good intentions, not executed the best way. <laughs> what happened? Not executed properly. Yeah, not executed properly. Good intentions, not executed properly, but a step in a direction. In a <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> we don't know what the direction was. North, south, east, west, <laughs> east. But it was a step. It was a step. Some somebody took a step somewhere. As a kid, I ended up. This is what I I watched this. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one that you watched. <laughs> No, yeah, I don't know. No, because my little sister really was obsessed with this movie, and I feel like it was because of the fact that it was Latino or like. Yeah, I think George Lopez having a leading role. Oh yeah. Might have helped me watch it, and then just Talking Dogs. Come on, I'm a sucker for Talking Dogs. Oh, Are you I me? love <laughs> Talking Dogs. Air Buddies. Ooh, my sisters hid that movie from me. How <laughs> much I would watch it. <laughs> Uh, Beverly Hills Chihuahua is also Delgado representation <laughs> because the the German Shepherd's name is Delgado. The police dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, anyway, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> the second one, but um, yeah, Beverly Hills Chihuahua is a fun movie. Um, definitely some questionable things, but um. A step in a direction. A step in a... I feel like they mi- might have gotten better as the sequence kind of went on. Like the... the, the Second, s- third. Sequels, sorry. The sequels. I see. Because I feel like... I, I don't have many memories of the second and third one. I do have the first one. But I think the second and third one, like, they have a quinceañera. Like, they have... Mm. They, like, go into the history of, like, of... Mm-hmm. Uh, indigenous people in mexico and and stuff like i don't know how accurate it was but like it brought up a conversation about yeah. it brought it to to light in the mainstream media yeah and and that's what i say i think it's a step in the direction they try to do something um and you know i think back then if people were able to have a platform they yeah they'd be able to uh talk their shit <laughs> or just like um try to push them in the right direction do you think because of, of this day and age, all the the accessibility to having a platform and to holding people accountable that has that also impacts what gets produced as well? Because because we're talking about all this stuff, like we're in a new era, we're entering a new era. And I feel like it might have have to do with the fact that, you know, people do start to speak on this and, and start to make it like widespread through social media and stuff like that. 
I, I do think so. Mm-hmm. I think, like you said, these conversations are happening a lot. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they're happening internally. We've talked about it mm-hmm. off camera, mm-hmm. off mic. Mm-hmm. It's conversations we constantly have. Yeah. Um, but now, you know, we have the, the power to have them be broadcast to the internet. Yeah. And, and I think that is very helpful. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. We should mention Bathy main character gardener <laughs> gardener <Bobby. laughs> he uh, uh uses his latin love to uh make a rich white dog fall in love with him his personality but <laughs> it was fun <laughs> Very i don't good. know i i I'm down to point out the, the bad stuff, but also point out the good stuff. Mm. This was one of those instances where it kind of like had some good stuff, had some bad stuff. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily cancel this movie, but there's some like, and, and I'll get to it, some stuff that's just like bad. And I'm like, mm. Yeah, because I feel like... Uh, this had some good. Yeah. I feel like back in the day, I would call it the scrap era, where mm. we would settle for scraps. Yeah. So like, you know, uh, like stuff. Well, yeah, it wasn't 100%, but... It wasn't a hundred percent. I'll take it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. They said familia. I'll take it. <laughs> 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 and that I feel like we're at least myself. I always try to say that I'm I'm done settling for scraps. Yeah, um, I want Same. something a bit more mm-hmm. real. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> more. and going back to like not trusting when Latino shit comes out. I'm always like, okay, so we're getting scraps again. Yeah, like internally. Like internally, like in we're my head, scraps. I'm like, we're getting scraps again, and I'm like already against it, mm-hmm. but. I've given a chance to a lot of these films this year, and yeah, Very I fucked good. with them. So Very good. we have reviews planned for them mm-hmm. eventually. But yeah, um, one of mine oh, 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 is I was gonna say George Lopez, but I um, I don't have that great memories of, or not that they're bad memories, but just strong memories. Strong memories mm. <laughs> of George Lopez. I remember liking it. It's really funny. Um, I see clips of it on tiktok Mm -hmm. once in a while i'm like Mm -hmm. this shit's so funny (laughs) like although george lopez now (laughs) there's controversy around Mm -hmm. him and not supporting latino artists um he what he was able to do back then i think was an example of good representation maybe still with a couple of little um problems but what do you think do you remember anything from it I'm trying. I because it would al- it would always be just like Nick at, at night at night, at night yeah, and you I would was wake like up at three a.m. No 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 Low Rider by War, <laughs> which my dad loves War, like uh-huh. the the musical artist. So like to me that was just a song, and then like it became like the George Lopez <laughs> song, and I was just like, I guess that in a way is quote unquote good representation yeah. of of just like mm-hmm. uh, Latinos hella fucked with War. I guess like my dad being second generation yeah. really liked war growing up um but i do like i f- from what i do remember he definitely did always try to push for the representation of latinidad um but i know now that you know there is a bit controversy with mm-hmm. the way that he goes about making things or like yeah and, and back then what I like about the show and what I do remember about this show and when I do get clips is they're normal. Normal? They are a normal family oh. dealing with normal issues mm-hmm. that Latinos just happen to also go through these issues as well. Yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. like, yeah, like problems with his mom or like problems at work or like they're not poor, poor, but they're not like super well off. Like yeah. It. It wasn't necessarily like these are Latino problems. They're just problems that humans have. Yeah. That happen to be Latino. <laughs> yeah. And I think that was a good step in the right direction. Yeah, because I feel like that also was like a there's a trope of like the American family, and a lot of people think that American is just white, mm-hmm. but that's it's not just that. It's yeah. literally made up of America is made up of so many different <laughs> types of of people. Yeah. Um, so that's literally what, like shows like that shows like one day at a time, like mm-hmm. stuff like that. They bring the Latinidad to the issue, but at the end of the day, 
they're just like common issues yeah. that a lot of people could relate to. And just George Lopez being uh, Latino himself mm-hmm. and like producing the show, like that's already just going to bring so much texture mm-hmm. that like doesn't have to be feeding you like Latino, Latino, Latino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I'm a big advocate of like, stop hitting me over the <laughs> head with it. I get it. Like it's going to show in other ways. Yeah. Um, you don't have to prove it. Um, but yeah. So when I was younger, and uh, we did talk about this in, in the first episode, I thought <laughs> that everybody was a Latino. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that. Mm-hmm. And especially when they were brunette, when they had dark hair, <laughs> I was like, Latino. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> so I was doing some research for, for this episode, and Wikipedia was saying that Carly Shay was Latina, and I, I don't know if that's true, but I do remember when I was younger thinking that Carly was Latina because she was brunette. I feel like Miranda Cosgrove might be a little Latina. Happy Hispanic character. She, lived, she Cosgrove. lives in Downey, which is close to where I live. Like, da- like Downey is where I go to the mall and where I go to the movie theaters and stuff like that. So it's like, like two towns over uh-huh. from where I live. And like... Downey is known as the Mexican Beverly Hills. Like, there was an article about, like, how Downey is the Mexican Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills Chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> In real life. <laughs> In real life. But that, that's where she grew up. So maybe just, just based on the demographic, she might be the, the demographics of Downey. <laughs> but <laughs> but I, was, I was also just really t- tired when I was making this <laughs> list. So everything <laughs> was so funny to me. I was like, girl, why is Wikipedia saying Carly Shay is a Latina? <laughs> um, <laughs> she does kind of look like because that one bit, meme, yeah. the one meme of the college admissions of mm, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they're just like Carly got a degree, <laughs> and it's the girl <laughs> going to college who looks like an off-brand version of Miranda. I see it, I Miranda see it. Dupe. Yeah, <laughs> but moving on, and we'll go ahead and do these sort of rapid fire. I think we might be running out of time already. Oh what my gosh, um, I didn't really. So fast. Yeah. Um, I'll go ahead and do some bad representation real quick. Uh, the Simpsons. Uh, as much as I love The Simpsons, The Simpsons are a very important part of my life and kind of sort of, um, how do I say this? Um, teaching me about the U.S. Mm-hmm. and about U.S. values and U.S. stories and kind of U.S. tropes. Um they did all that, but they had a character called Bumblebee Man. Um, it was this Latino guy in a bumblebee suit, and like he had like a a show on like their the local TV station in the in Springfield, um, and he was just very like over the top, like ay ay ay, like la la la, and like stuff like that. Um, ay chihuahua. Stuff like that. So I think that was bad representation. Uh, like one of the only Latino the only Latino character I would say for a long time in The Simpsons. Um, that 70s show, uh, I didn't watch this as a kid, but I watched it now. But people would have watched it growing up as mm-hmm. kids, like in the 2000s. Um, Fez, mm. um, they just know him as the foreigner on that show. Um, and the actor was made to do an accent. Uh, that wasn't his accent. And he has said in interviews that even towards the end of the show, like he kind of lost the accent and he was just doing whatever, like mm-hmm. because he like that's just not him. Yeah, uh, just always making fun of him. I don't think that was good representation. Uh, there was there are funny moments, but that's handy many, right? Yes, yeah, it is. Um, and oh fuck, I forgot about handy many. I love handy many. <laughs> Let's go into that. Handy many. <laughs> I love handy many. I would watch it with my dad. Mm-hmm. Uh, tools and shit. <laughs> Um, was a handy man. He did everything. Felipe the screwdriver. <laughs> I remember them. Pat the hammer. <laughs> this is just like unlocking things in my brain <laughs> one by one. Felipe the screwdriver. <laughs> that's bo- that's my boy right there. I Damn. think that I think that was good representation. It was it was sweet. It, it was, was a sweet show. It was sweet. He was Latino, but again, it wasn't like necessarily hitting you over the head with the fact that he was Latino. Mm-hmm. Great job, Disney Junior. I think that was Disney Junior. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have anything else? Um, I mean, just like rapid fire. <laughs> yeah, sort <laughs> just of. Just going through the list of like characters that I remember being Latino growing up. The Russos, yeah. where there's a Waverly Place, were half Latino. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. They were a lot of fun. Um, Plaza Sesamo. 
Like the other ones, but Plaza Sesamo, Plaza Sesamo. You have this guy's name here. Is this the or the Big Bird? The yeah, the Latino one? Big Bird, <laughs> Abelardo, I think. Like, like that was off the top of my head. <laughs> but he was the big, the the Latino Big Bird. I loved Plaza Sesamo growing up. Um, let me see. The three caballeros. You haven't got into it, yeah. Controversial, but she is very gorgeous to me. You can spend some time on this. I watched this for the first time with you. I've watched it since I've known you. I've watched it probably four times with you. <laughs> but go ahead and talk about it. It's a comfort movie. I can't help it. I can't help it. I feel like <laughs> it is one of those movies where when you watch it on Disney Plus, you get the little <laughs> warning at the <laughs> beginning. And they're like, this is a product of its time. It might not be accurate. And da, 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 da. So it's one of those movies. Sorry, everyone. But it did have so much impact on me as a child. Still, 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 still. I literally watched The Tres Caballeros so much. We had a DVD. I watched it so much that I scratched it completely. And then when I first, when I got my very first iTunes card, the first thing that I bought on iTunes was Tres Caballeros digitally <laughs> so that I couldn't scratch it. So I could watch it as many times as I wanted to and not scratch it. And then streaming came along and saved my life. As long as it might be like full of exaggerations or misrepresentations, mm -hmm. um, with bunch it, of pistolas, it's gorgeous animation. Um, I don't know. They this I, this this is a little bit of scraps. It would, is, you, would you think it is definitely because it was made during the Good Neighbor policy. Yeah, like that's the origin of like why it was made. Like trying to get the like u.s Dude. latinos to be besties and like not fucking yeah be communist yeah or yeah. like support the u.s in its efforts against yeah the nazis yeah <laughs> and the axis powers and i i ate it up i'm so sorry everybody it, it, and it sucks that it had to be like this is basically propaganda <laughs> it, it sucks that it had that i mean it was 1994 1944. 1944, sorry. It sucks that this was produced as propaganda and because of political circumstances in the U.S., but, you know, scraps. It is it, scraps. And it sucks. <sighs> it's still fun. It's fun. I liked it. I like Pablo the Penguin. Oh, I love that sequence. I feel like I know that movie, the entire script from, like, beginning. <laughs> I'll do one podcast where I just recreate the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I forgot I forgot what we were watching last time where I was like this is my favorite part no 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 this is my favorite part no 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 I, it might have not been with you I'm like this is my favorite part um, and I feel like you have those moments with, with this with movie, this movie? Oh you're like I love this part I, I'm like my everybody favorite. shut up everybody shut up and it's like only me talking everybody else is just sitting there they're like girl you shut up <laughs> I I don't know. I feel like it was like it made an impression on me as a child, <laughs> mm -hmm. like when a, like when an animal sees the very first thing that it sees things is mama. Tres <laughs> <That laughs> <was laughs> caballeros is mama. Fair, fair. Um, mm, yeah, just keep rapid firing. The lowrider fool from Cars, Papi from the Proud Family, Maya and Miguel, Dragon Tales, Max and Emmy, mm -hmm. uh, Eduardo from Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Demi Lovato's character in Princess Protection <laughs> Program. <laughs> Trish from Austin and Alley, personal favorite. Benny. Is that, uh, Baila. <laughs> Baila. Rainy Rodriguez. <laughs> she has a name, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Fiesta Salsa Quinceañera. I just know Baila. her by her by her bop. <laughs> by, her, by her certified <laughs> bo -bo 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 banger. <laughs> um, let me see. Benny the Jet Rodriguez from the Senla. Jesus and Mariana from the Fosters, an honorable mention, Taylor Lautner in <laughs> Twilight, because he was Latino to me. <laughs> I was Team Jacob because of that. <laughs> <laughs> the tweet that's like I was I was yeah. Team Jacob because he thought because I thought he was Mexican. <laughs> I thought he was Latino and uh, Shark Boy and Lava Girl too. Um, I have. I have McFarland USA mm -hmm. um, and a movie called Spare Parts, but I feel like maybe we can save those for another episode mm -hmm. because they're kind of similar in style, but one is a white savory movie and I don't think the other one is. 
or I'm not sure. I don't remember, but I will rewatch both of these or maybe we can rewatch them in the future and mm-hmm. then just compare them. I think that'd be fun. Oh, yeah. um, but other than that, Nacho Libre, Jack Black's not Latino, but he is an honor. He's an honorary Latino. He can say the B word if he wants to. Oh I will God. give him the pass. <laughs> 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 he can say it all he wants, um, but like all the background characters are also Latino you know, in that, so it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know he. Uh, is there a boo button? No. Because <laughs> we only have good takes. <laughs> <laughs> we make a boo button. <laughs> <laughs> I should put that on there. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> With that, I think it brings us to the end, right? Yeah. Any closing thoughts? Um, I didn't come up with a Latino artist, Rec. Oh, that's okay. I can talk some more while you think. Um, Yeah, I think taking this trip down memory lane is a good way to kind of... I think one thing that we're going to constantly be talking about um, as Latino creators, as people who want to go into this industry, is just Latino representation and how far we've come and how far we still need to go. Um... So I think having this as our third episode uh, is a good kind of thing. It looks like this is where we started. Um, and if you want us to talk about more in depth on any of these things that we mentioned, I know we ran out of time, but if you want us to talk about any of these things more in depth, leave a comment down below. If you are watching on YouTube, you leave a comment on one of our Instagram videos, one of our TikToks. We'll, 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 we'll see it and, and we can go more in depth. Um, maybe revisit it, actually watch it before an episode of the podcast but mm-hmm. um yeah i feel like we could make the if we actually were to watch these again i feel mm-hmm. like we could make an episode out of all of these but <laughs> do you have your artist yet um i do but i'm not 100 percent what her name is i might have to gig- giggle i might have to, g- <laughs> <laughs> to google <laughs> <laughs> i might have to giggle and just like <laughs> who is it my latino artist recommendation is uh jenzine benitez who sings a lot with the group called um these sacred souls which has who have been kind of blowing up a bit because of tiktok and stuff mm-hmm. i've heard them twice in different things mm-hmm. yeah. they, they have really really good music i feel like the, that genre of music is also just really popular with the latino community and they have a uh, a backup singer who's starting to kind of do her own career named jenzine and she's really good i saw the sacred souls at MacArthur Park, I think, la- last summer. Mm-hmm. And uh, they introduced her. They were like, oh, this is Gen Zine. And, and she sang one of her original songs. And it was beautiful. It was like, she's so good. She sings amazing. And she's com- she's releasing a lot of music. My favorite right at the moment is Ilusión de Amor. And it's just, she's just an artist that I think everybody should should take a, take a look at, listen to her stuff. And also... Listen to these sacred souls as well. <laughs> yeah, great recommendation if you like R and B slash soul. Mm-hmm. Which I it's adore. amazing. It's, it's great music. Mm-hmm. Definitely. But with that, thank you all very much for watching and making it this far into the episode. We appreciate your your eyeballs, your ears for <laughs> being with us. <laughs> I appreciate your eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> um, but thank you again. Uh, make sure to follow us on our social medias at hand me down pod on instagram and tiktok uh the hand me down podcast on youtube if you want to see it um with the video or on spotify as well uh catch us uh, anywhere you get your podcast uh, as an audio experience and yeah thank you for all the love that you guys have been showing us thus far on social media we really appreciate it um mm-hmm. we hope that we can do this for much longer mm-hmm. so with that super exciting stuff Bye. (laughs) Have a great day.